All right, hello, Ben and Silver Kyle, and today we are going to be taking a look at the X-Men Volume 2 Omnibus that just got a reprint here in March of 2022, uh, which coincides with the uh, first volume that we got a reprint uh, last month. Uh, so now you have the full uh, Silver Age Volumes 1 and 2 of the X-Men, so the, the full beginnings of it, uh, which generally aren't really seen as great stories or fantastic. I haven't read any of them myself, so I'm kind of wor worried a little bit, uh, but I still like having the beginnings of everything, and then pretty much afterwards, if you get the um, Uncanny Volume 1 omnibus uh, of X-Men, where C Chris Claremont uh, starts his run, and we have giant size X-Men, that's really generally seen where uh, X-Men really starts to pick up and kind of became popular in the powerhouses that they are today. Um, I'll just also show these spines together. Uh, so Volume 1 is a little bit thinner uh, than Volume 2. Uh, volume 2 is a little over 900 pages, uh, so it, we're getting a little bit more there, and uh, has these new Marvel spines that Marvel seems to love, and they seem to be the only ones in that category, as I th I think, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone else saying that they prefer uh, these. I, I'm, there's nothing wrong with this image, but to start over is just such a shame, but I'm still happy that we have these and reprinted, because uh, these were pretty big whales. Uh, for quite a long time, so. Look at the back. A lot of nice covers here. And this is the uh, standard edition cover, uh, which is a variant of this one, which is the standard... Uh, sorry, this is the direct market. Uh, and I honestly, when they do upgraded art, I always feel like it should be at least more... Like, if you're going to do modern, I generally hope that it's better than the original stuff, uh, but the original, to me, looks better than this. I, I don't particularly like this. I like that it's at least the same image, but that that's pretty much it. Direct market would have been a lot nicer. And we also get in this volume two here, uh, where they start to create, the, uh, where they started the X-Men logo uh, that it's known for. And, like, you go back and you look at X-Men, that, that looks so much like the Silver Age in 60s. But that looks a lot more modern. That looks way more modern than the end of the Silver Age. That, that's wild. Uh, so it retails for $125 in the US, $156.25 uh, in Canada. I think I got it for about $110 from pre-order from indigo.ca when they were having a sale. Uh, collects the X-Men 32 to 66, the Avengers 53, and material from Kazar 2, 3, and Marvel Tales 30. Take a look at the flaps. So just some information on the run itself and then the creators. The old cla classic X-Men original logo. Same spine from the dust jacket. And the X in the back. All right. Let's open her up. I do like the um, art, like Silver Age isn't my favorite, but I, I generally was, when I was flipping through this, I, I liked it for the most part. You have uh, the creators of every everything, showing what they worked on. They really go all, it's, it's, it's such a shame that the modern books don't do this because why would you not want to have a table of contents? I mean, they do have the creators pages, I can't think of any time that they don't. It's possible that there's some maybe modern books that don't have this, but I don't know. I, I just love the layout of these Silver Age books. We have a forward by Roy Thomas, and we jump into the issue with the actual number and all like that. It's it's weird, right? We get all these Silver Age and you know older omnibus that give us, instead of virgin covers, they give us the actual issues, and it's like... They just kind of fall. It's just going to be 32, 33, 34, 35. It's not going to go into, you know, it's not going to be a really crazy mapping. Um, and generally, like, I would, the other books that have crazy mapping that are kind of flip-flopping from between a bunch of different comics, uh, I would prefer those ones actually have uh, more information with the number on which issue I'm reading. It says, okay, is this X-Men? Is this X-Factor? Is this... Whatever it may be. Uh, the paper quality is... Well, it's, it's, it's not the thinnest, not the thickest either. 
but the feel of it is uh, that dust kind of kind of like dusty feel that that a lot of uh, the books in the past few years have had uh, where I feel like a lot of maybe it's just because we had a lot of X-Men in the last few years I, I think with reprints uh, so I ended up picking up a lot and I noticed a lot with them whereas and for the most part, every time that I felt this dusty feeling that I'm talking about, there it would be just for like an issue or two, and then you'd have an issue that would be glossy covered, uh, like a gloss feel, and then it would go back to the dusty, and it would kind of go back and forth. This, for the most part, for everything that I felt so far, has that kind of dust feel to it. It's like you want to kind of, I don't know, I feel like I feel like I have to clean my pages, which is not a good feeling. I don't know why that, that that's happening. It's probably because of where it's being printed. But it's also weird that you get an omnibus, right? So it's printed at the same place, and then some issues are glossy, and some issues are dusty. I don't understand that, the logic for that. <laughs> they change paper for a bit of it? I, I don't know. Um, It lays flat, and it's not wanting to close, but there's not much of an eye as it's laying on the ground. I'll show you that later on, but it's Silver Age, so you don't really like the gutter loss. It's, we got that white... Uh, that's that's kind of taking over, uh, taking over for that, and and so you won't really have any a hard time reading any of the, the bubbles, and there's not really going to be any two page spreads, either. I didn't I didn't stretch it out crazy amongst. I thought that that's that's a really nice, like that's nice. What is this? Yeah, late, late like this, the later part of this has really nice art who's drawing this Roy Thomas no he's the uh, yeah, Neil, Neil Adams duh yeah that's that makes sense because that's really nice man I'm just really digging the art, so I'm kind of taking a little bit more time here. Uh, there are some extras that we will get into. Oh, and, and they have this as well, the the mailbox, so you get to see the letters from uh, back in the day. And it, it, it's it, these are really interesting. I don't read them all the time, but I always take the time um, throughout every omnibus that has these to read a few of them uh, because it really dates what was kind of going on, what fans were thinking of at that time and the creators and it, it's a nice look back all right let's go to the extras so what's this not brand Eck. did they not where's my they don't say that there's any not brand Eck here but it's there is there more brand no not that I, I mean, I, I think it would be good, nice to know. Not, I don't really care about Not Brand Eck. I've tried reading a bit of it. And it's just not my taste. Issue eight is here as well. So four and eight. And then it goes into some regular extras that we're used to. This is nice work. Wow. Eh? Gorgeous. That's close to the end here. Okay, so who did this one? I don't know which one I would have preferred. Anyway, I would have preferred the original stuff. And we'll just take a quick look at the actual... Uh, well, there's a bit of an eye. Okay, we'll go into a, a better view. It's so the same page that I was on. And just to show you that eye, which isn't really popping up too much at all so I, I could maybe stretch this out a bit more uh it's it's not tight at all um there well it does look like there's a lot of glue there doesn't there yeah that's what's weighing it down and keeping that eye from really popping i think just stretching it out a little bit more and i didn't um but that that's that's what we're, we're dealing with uh i didn't find a big issue with it as i was going through because it's, it's silver age so it's not really needed although i would like it to open up a bit more but uh, very, like, that, that art, just 
absolutely fantastic. Anyway, <laughs> I think I'm a big fan of Neil Adams. Uh, so thank you all for watching. You have been bearded in. Beardage.